Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. If you're ready to see some fabulous French country decor ideas, let's get started. I'm starting off with these couple of terracotta pots. These are the mini ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use one of the medium sized. I'm using a color called mushroom. It's a cross between beige and gray. And I really think it lends itself to the vintage look of these pots. I went to Pixabay and typed in number one, number two, and number three, and I found three matching little designs. And these are so pretty. They have a little bit of gold, a little bit of sort of a tealy turquoise color. And I printed them out on napkins. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Using my Mod Podge technique, I'm gonna put some on, grab that little tissue paper or napkin paper printable and put that right on top of the Mod Podge and then smooth it out, making sure that my brush is always moist with the Mod Podge. I'm going to repeat these steps for the other two pots. The number one, I printed out a little bit larger, so that'll be the bottom pot, and then the two and the three are for the small pots. A quick tip for you is to use your paintbrush when you're ready to pick up any of these little pieces of paper. It helps you with control because you're doing it one handed and you don't need both fingers to place it. Now that the Mod Podge has dried, I'm going to take just a rough brush and do some dry brushing on the pots. I want them to look old and aged and weathered and clay pots tend to have sort of the white powdery look to them. So I thought using some white and dry brushing would make it look more realistic. I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue at the bottom of the first pot, which is the medium size. And I'm going to just glue in a piece of pool noodle. That's what I use for my florals now. The floral foam is just so expensive and pool noodles work absolutely fine. They actually work better than the floral foam because they don't fall apart and make a huge mess. As you can see, I've pushed a quarter inch dowel all the way through the pool noodle and now I'm going to feed the other two pots down the dowel and then I'm going to glue them so they're sitting one way and then the other way. Just some hot glue on that dowel and the pot will hold it in place nicely. I also added some hot glue down at the bottom of the pot where the dowel originally comes through and that just secures it even more. I'm going to be adding the Sola wood flowers that I have. These flowers are absolutely gorgeous. They look so pretty against this vintage pot color. I'm going to just glue some of them around the lip of the pots, but I am going to add little bits of pool noodle into the other ones so I can use some stems and push those in and make sure they're arranged the way I like them to be. When I'm cutting off other florals, I always keep the little bits and pieces of stem. And these are perfect to use for the solo wood flowers because you can just poke them right through the bottom. As I was working on the flowers, I did notice that the pot arrangement was a little bit tippy. It's not very heavy because all of the florals and everything are very lightweight. So I grabbed this little thrifted saucer that I've had in my stash for a while and I added some hot glue and I'm going to glue the pot right on top of it. Makes it so much more sturdy. Then I'm going to use the same mushroom paint and give it a couple of coats to hide the blue. The arrangement is done. I've good with the flowers how they are but there are some little gaps you can see some of the pool noodle here and I wanted to just cover that up and add even a little bit more texture I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue where I need to and then I'm going to add some of this Dollar Tree reindeer moss I am absolutely in love with this arrangement. I think the addition of the saucer on the bottom just added that extra touch and made it look really super vintage and stunning. I hope you like it too. Project number two is using this half wall tin container that I picked up at my Dollarama store. It's cute the way it is, but I want to make it even prettier. 
I've had some people ask about tissue paper printing and that it doesn't work for them very well. So I wanted to find a different way to do the tissue paper printing. If you peel off the backing of the napkins, you can also use those to go through your printer. You're going to take the napkin and tape it onto a piece of printer paper and then run it through your printer as normal. Now, with napkins, they absorb the ink a little bit more than the tissue paper. So for those of you who were having problems with it smudging or smearing, this might work for you. I found this beautiful image on pixabay.com, so I will leave the link down in my description box. I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply the napkin right to my project. And I'm going to have it come in from the sides so there's a white space in the center. If this is your first time seeing me do this decoupage method, I do have a tutorial down in my description box and I also have one on my TechSpot channel. I decided to just do a little bit of tearing of the tissue paper right on the edge there as well to make it look a little bit more rustic. I added some of the leftovers to the top and the bottom so you can see that I have this white space in the center. And this is where I'm going to put a beautiful French printable that I got from the Graphics Fairy. I will have that also listed down in my description box and I'm using the same method to apply it. This is a little bit different from what I normally do on my channel, but I really love the blues. And I'm sure there are some people out there that love blue as well. If you're one of them, let me know in the comments below. For this project, I'm using a wooden charger plate that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm going to give it one good coat of my DIY chalk paint and I'm using a chip brush because I want a lot of brush strokes in this paint technique. I'm also going in the same direction. You can see that I'm just going up and down consistently because I want this to have sort of a wood grain feel. Next, I'm going to attach these extra large wooden beads as feet, so this can be a decorative wall piece, but also a tray. I'm gluing these together so there's raw wood on raw wood, which means the glue will hold much better. Once this has dried, I'm also going to give the complete bottom along with the beads a coat of my white chalk paint. I want to give this plate a shiplap look, so I'm just using my ruler and a pencil, and I'm going to just draw three lines. I've already measured them out and put a little dot so I know where to go with my lines. I wanted the shiplap lines to be a little bit distressed, so I'm just using my finger and smudging that pencil all the way across. This really made a big difference in how the piece looks. The technique I'm using today requires me to add water to the projects. So in order for my chalk paint not to bleed or run or come off with the water, I'm giving it a good coat of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. The process I'm using today is water slide decal paper. I get mine from Hippo and I do have a link for it down in my description box. It is a really inexpensive way to achieve an IOD stamp or transfer look without having to spend all that money on those transfers. I used my detail scissors to cut out the design fairly close to all of the leaves, but I didn't want to go too detailed because then it's really difficult to hang on to the product when you're trying to get it on your project. With water slide paper, the next step is to immerse it completely in some really nicely warm water. You don't want it hot, but you don't want it too cool. And you need to press everything down. So 
you can see all of the little edges that I cut out are curling up and that's why I didn't want to go too detailed with my cutting because I still need to be able to push all of this down into the water. You're going to leave it here for a good 35, 40 to 60 seconds. Once you see that the plastic is starting to lift off from the paper, you're ready to pull it out. When I'm working with larger projects like this, I like to use a spray bottle to mist my item. It just makes it easier to make sure that there's enough water underneath the water slide paper so you don't have a hard time getting it stuck down. So what you do then is just pull off the paper from underneath. Make sure that your design is attached to some part of your project at the top and then gently pull out the paper Paper from underneath. Take your time with this because it can wrinkle but you have some time to move it and get it nice and straight. That's why you want a decent amount of water underneath your project so you can lift it off and then press it down where it needs to be. Then take a soft cloth or a tissue. I like to use a tissue and gently press from the inside out making sure that you're pushing all of those water bubbles out to the edge and the reason you're using either a paper towel or a tissue is that once that water gets to the edge it gets absorbed by the tissue and then you're not left with a water puddle mess. Next, I'm going to freehand the word gather on it. I am looking at a paper above there that has the word that I want in the font style, so I can just duplicate that down on my tray. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my Sharpie oil-based marker and fill it in. I'm giving it one coat of matte Mod Podge so I can make sure that that transfer is permanent. And I am absolutely in love with this project. If you're interested in a full tutorial on how to use water slide decal paper, I will list that in my description box and on the end screen of this video. One thing to note, you do need to use a matte clear spray on your decals, otherwise they turn out shiny. The can I grabbed at the store the last time was a semi-gloss, which is a huge no-no. That's why you can see all of the shine on these projects, but I still think they turned out absolutely beautiful. For this second project, I'm using this tall terracotta pot. I got a set of two of them at the thrift store and I just love the size and the shape of them. They're just very unique. Anyhow, I'm giving it one rough coat again with my chip brush of my white chalk paint. It doesn't matter if a little bit of the terracotta shows through because I want it to be fairly rustic. Now, if you don't have a Lazy Susan or a turntable like this when you're working on round projects, Projects, you are missing out. Make sure you hit those thrift stores or check out anywhere you can find a turntable or a Lazy Susan because it makes the work so much easier when you can spin that project around. To give the pot more of an aged look, I'm just using a brush that already has my mushroom colored paint on it and I'm just giving it a dry brush. A little heavier in some areas, a little lighter in other areas. It really doesn't matter. Whatever suits you, whatever you like. I found some really pretty olive sprig designs on pixabay.com and everything that I have found will be available on my website as a free printable. So make sure you check that link in my description box as well. This again is a water slide decal, so I'm soaking it in water and then I'll apply it to the pot. I printed off some smaller sprigs of the olives and I'm just going to add a couple of them to the lip of the pot as well. For this pot, I decided to make a tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take some of these glass beads that I got from the dollar store a long time ago. They've just been hanging out in my stash. And I'm just gonna put some down at the bottom to give it a little bit of weight. Using my utility knife, I'm just gonna cut the corners off of this block of styrofoam and then wedge it down into the pot. 
I'm going to be making a tree. So what I took first was just a leftover piece of stem. It is a plastic stem, but it's brown. And I'm taking these little boxwood stems. I've cut the little circle down at the bottom to make it a little bit easier to push them onto the stems. And I'm going to continue filling up all of the stems with this boxwood. Once I had filled up all the little stem pieces, I then took some additional green stems and glued them on just with some hot glue. I wanted to fill it in just a little bit and make it look more full. I pushed the stem into the styrofoam and used a little bit of hot glue to make sure it stayed in place. Now I'm taking some green floral wire and just bending it into a U shape because I want to add some of this moss but I don't want to glue it down should I ever decide to change my mind about this later on. So I can just take this little bit of wire and push it down into the moss into the styrofoam and it will hold it in place really well. This first one is with three of these thrifted frames that I found for $1.99. They were part of my last haul. I just thought the lines and the details were absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do first is paint all three of them with a couple coats of my DIY chalk paint. If you're interested in learning how to make that chalk paint, I have a recipe down in my description box. I thought about a few different ways to distress this. I could use some dark wax or I could use some sandpaper, but I decided just to take my Cricut spatula here. You could use any type of metal scraping tool and just go ahead and scrape the paint off where I wanted the original gold and dark brown to show through. I learned this technique from Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living, and she uses a paint scraper. It's a really fun tool. I've never seen it before and I think I'm probably going to get myself one because she uses it on wood as well and that just gives it a really chippy look. So if you're not familiar with Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living, I'm going to have her channel link down in my description box. Using my computer and the Google Drawing program and Pixabay for free images, I created some printables that I'm going to print off on white cardstock and then just use a glue stick to glue them onto the original backing of the frame. I create a lot of my free printables in Google Drawing, so if you're interested in learning how to use that program, I just launched a tutorial a couple of days ago, and I'll have it linked down in my description box. I printed these out on white cardstock, and I love using my paper trimmer just to make sure that I get a nice straight line. Sometimes when I'm using my scissors, I get a little wonky, so having this type of tool is really handy when you're doing paper crafts. Once I have the glue applied and my paper stuck on the backing, I'm just going to tack it into the frame with a few dots of hot glue in the four corners, and then I'm going to use a generous amount of hot glue all the way around the backing to make sure that it's securely into the frame. When I use hot glue, I like to make sure that I hold it down a little bit because I want this cardboard to adhere to the sides of the frame. And with applying a whole bunch of hot glue, sometimes it's best just to hold it down and wait for that glue to set a bit and then move on to the next part. I had three of these frames, so I did a different flower for each frame, and I put the labels of two of the flowers inside using just a Sharpie fine tip marker, and I just hand wrote it in. But you'll have to let me know if you know what the third flower is, because I couldn't find anything similar to it online. So if you know what it is, let me know, because I'd love to be able to make this a matching set.
I'd like to take a quick second and thank all of my current subscribers. I love you guys. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for subscribing, for watching my videos, and helping me grow my channel. If you're new and you'd like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. I upcycle a lot of canisters and teapots and things that have a shiny surface, so the first thing I like to do is give them a coat of matte clear finish by Rust-Oleum, and that just helps the paint stick a lot better. I'm giving this piece one quick coat of my DIY chalk paint in white. I have done the baking soda mixture paint on a bunch of different projects before, but I realized today that I've never used white paint. I've always done a colored paint. So I was really excited to try it with the white. So I put a decent amount of the baking soda into my paint. I would say it might have even been a half and half kind of, or maybe just a little bit extra paint. You can always just work with the texture and see how you like it, but this turns out really nice and thick, and that's what I was looking for. I'm just going to use a small brush and go ahead and add all of this onto my canister, making sure I get the rim and inside the rim a little bit as well. Once the paint was completely dry, I'm using this home decor clear wax and I like to use clear wax because then I can tint it any color I want rather than going and buying black wax, white wax, brown wax. So it just makes it go a lot further. What I'm adding to this wax is a little dot of Parisian gray chalk paint. I just want this to have sort of a gray beigey kind of look and it turned out perfect. I'm adding the wax mixture just to the label portion of the canister. I didn't want to do anything else with it. I wanted just that label and the scroll work around it to pop. So I'm going to add a generous amount of the wax, making sure I get into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and just dab off the excess. If you try this technique, just make sure when you're going around the edges where the scroll is that you take a clean section of the paper towel because you don't want to reapply that wax onto the rest of the canister. I decided to go a little out of my comfort zone and use some of this purple delphinium instead of lavender. I also used some of these other little purple flowers from the Dollar Tree, but they were little short stems. So I added them onto some larger stems that I always have in my stash and I keep. So that way I can make the flowers the length I want them to be. When I create my flower arrangements, I like to start with the main floral first. But in this instance, I'm using these upright greenery stems that I wanted to have kind of in between all of the florals. So I needed to add these in first. Then I'm going to add the delphinium all the way around, making sure that I'm working with odd numbered pieces like three, five, seven, nine. And then at the end, I'm going to just fill in all of the gaps with those little dark purple flowers from the Dollar Tree. I decided to add some different colored florals to each of the other two canisters because I'll be selling these as individual pieces. I think they turned out really pretty. Let me know what you think. If you like what you see so far, I would really appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. And I'll also know that you like this type of content. For this spring French country DIY, I grabbed this scrap piece of wood from my garage and I'm just taking my sanding block and rounding out the edges so it's not quite so sharp. I gave it two coats of my DIY chalk paint and now I'm taking the same sanding block going all the way around the edges making sure that I get all the way down to the bare wood a little bit extra around the corners. I just want this to look really old and weathered.
I'm going to add some scrapbook paper to the bottom of the board and I'm just taking the scrapbook paper and tearing it up so I get a nice rough edge on it. I don't want to have anything too straight on this. Again, I want it to look really old and weathered. So I'm just going to keep trimming the paper down by tearing it until I get the size I need. I'm just going to use a glue stick to apply it to the wood. I'm gonna start at the top and then just smooth it out. And then I have another little piece of paper that's going to fill in the bottom section. And you can see here around the edges that it's exactly how I wanted it. I want it to look kind of off a little bit and not perfect. Next, I'm taking a tiny little piece of sandpaper and running it along the edge of the paper to give it a little bit even more distressing. This is going to pull up some of the paper and actually get it right off. And it's also just going to kind of fade out the print on the paper and make it look like it's really worn. I love using drop cloth in my projects and I'm still working on a piece that I picked up at Home Depot for 20 bucks. It was four feet wide by 15 feet long and I swear I think I've had it for two years and I've just been working at it until I get rid of it. I'm almost done so soon it'll be time for a new piece. I'm just going to cut this again a little smaller than the scrapbook paper because I want you to be able to see all of these details. I am using fabric scissors. You can see how easily they glide through the fabric so if you are cutting any fabric make sure you have a good pair of scissors otherwise you're going to be struggling and you're probably going to wreck the fabric too. I frayed the edges of the fabric just by pulling on the threads and getting some of them out. It never turns out even so don't be afraid to just trim your little frayed edges and make them look better. Okay, so you've seen me do all sorts of dupes of the IOD stamps and transfers. And I did say that they were pretty expensive and over my budget, but you know what? I decided to invest in the Sprig Stamps. They are my absolute favorite and this is the first time I'm using them. So I'm just gently pulling off the cover sheet and then I'm going to be cutting out the one that I want from the bottom sheet. I'm going to leave all of the stamps on the thick plastic that they're on here that you can see and I'm going to be using that as my backing. So I really love this one in the center that looks like a lavender. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and then I'm gonna do a test run on a piece of paper. For now, the ink I'm using is just from the dollar store, but I have a shipment of stays on black ink on the way and I'm hopeful that it will be here soon because I don't wanna use this ink too much on my stamps. I wanna use a good quality ink with them. Now I'm just going to lay it down, hold it in place, and then gently start pushing all of the leaves and everything down into place so I don't wiggle it. And when I lifted this up, I just about jumped out of my skin. It's absolutely gorgeous. Take a look at that. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely beautiful. I am so in love. I cleaned off the stamp and now I'm reapplying the ink to put it on my little piece of drop cloth. I think if I had better ink, it would have turned out a little bit deeper or maybe I just didn't add enough ink to my stamp, but I still really like how it turned out. I just used hot glue to apply it to the plank and then I added a couple of little shoestring bows and even though the flower looks a little bit faded, I still think it looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you like this video, here's a couple more that might interest you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else I have to share. Bye for now.